Let's go straight into ArcelorMittal South Africa, formerly known as ISCO. It's approximately 60% owned by the global ArcelorMittal group, the brainchild of Lakshmi Mittal and the world's biggest steel maker. It sources most of its iron ore from Kumba and has steel plants in Fundabale Park, Newcastle, Tambazimbi and Saldana. It has experienced very volatile earnings in recent years, which is reflected in the share price now trading at multi-year lows below 55 rand per share. ArcelorMittal has a market cap of 24 billion rand and a price to earnings ratio of around 13. Raynaud, we're coming directly to you in Cape Town. There's also obviously the uncertainty that still surrounds the, the share and has a number of investors relatively rattled. Can we get your thoughts on that? Yes, definitely. You know, if you look at a company like Metal, I mean, it kind of has the makeup of a company that is supposed to do very, very well, you know, because it does or it's supposed to have pricing power in the in the domestic market. It is a monopoly. But yet, if you look at the quarterly profits, you know, it's very sporadic. You know, the one quarter they make a profit, the one quarter they make a loss. And it hasn't really been since about 2008 that the company has done very, very well. And that is actually despite charging probably the highest steel, steel prices globally. I think a company like Mittal charges about a price roughly about 10 to 15, say, percent above global benchmark prices. Now, they don't have to charge global benchmark. I think it's more of a gentleman's agreement between them and the DTI and have signed in, two, in 2005 or so. So what Mittal tends to do is is, 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 is to rather charge on like an import parity basis, which is very high, high steel prices, and still they can't make money. So what are the reasons for it? I suppose, you know, their, their, their main steel mills or steel plants is just very, very old. You know, they have been in existence for many, many years. So costs are kind of rising significantly. Renato, I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to jump in here because I want to bring it back to Joburg. But, but very quickly, I see you are holders of ArcelorMittal. So you obviously believe in the story. Yeah, I suppose let me let me quantify it or clarify it. You know, um, you know, we've 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 got numerous portfolios, and we're not major shareholders. Um, although I would say there is certainly a big valuation argument to be made. You know, metal is, is extremely um, random. Sensitive. It, it is an excellent RAN, RAN hedge, so when the RAN weakens, they tend to make a fair amount of money. Um, book value for the company is roughly about 55 Rand. And as I said, you know, just, just because it's not a great long-term business, it's not to say that you can't generate fairly good returns from very All right, bring low it back to, to Paul in, bring levels. it back to Paul in Johannesburg. From mm. a valuation perspective, it makes sense if you look at it as a mm. rand hedge. Something you may need right mm. now. We've got dollar rand trading at eight twenty nine. Mm. What are your thoughts? Look, Telcom's motto is "Touch Tomorrow." Uh, ArcelorMittal's logo is "Transforming Tomorrow," which you know sounds a bit more compelling. But really, to understand this company, you need to go back a bit. I mean, ISCOR was a state-owned parastatal set up in 1928 and expanded substantially after the war, the Second World War, that is, in order to kind of provide steel for the industrialization of South Africa. And of course, we've got our own iron ore, which is, you know, substantial out there in Sishin, and there was Tarbazimbi, there was iron ore as well. So we've got the natural resources to make steel, but once... Oslor and Mittal got involved, it became part of a global group and the relationship between government and them changed fundamentally and not in a good way. And the reason is because uh, Lakshmi Mittal is interested in making money as much as possible. And it's a very difficult relationship simply because they price steel, as Reynard said, on a kind of import parity basis. So they look at benchmark prices around the world. That's arguable because with cheap iron ore here, you'd have to say, well, why can't we have cheaper steel here? But you know, that's not how life works. So it's always been this kind of tense relationship. And then to add to their problems, the old ISCOR mines ended up in Kumba, and then the IT and human resources and legal department at ArcelorMittal forgot to renew the mineral rights. And that disaster has now blown up. So it finds itself in a rather invidious position. And it's now a point, I think, where as a minority shareholder alongside the ArcelorMittal group, you've no idea from one period to the next what kind of profits they're going to make and what government's next move in the sector is going to be. Dane Schwarren, who is from Foot Asset Management uh, at Foot, they're forecasting the dollar rand going to, well, actually, he said I shouldn't use the term forecasting, so my apologies to Dane there, but there is potential for the RAND to go to that 950, 10 level to, to the dollar. And in light of that, as a RAND hedge, this would be a great play, wouldn't it, Reynard? 
Yes, definitely. You know, I think, you know, from, from current levels, because earnings are so depressed and so marginal, you know, so for every 1%, I would think that the RAND weakens. It probably adds three three or four times that to, to Arcelor earnings. And, you know, you only have to look at the level of steel imports into 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 South Africa now versus when, when the currency was a lot weaker. I think I think total steel imports or as a percentage of, of, of domestic steel consumption is running at about 14 to 15 percent currently now a couple of years ago when the rand was weaker that kind of level was well was well below 10 percent and in the 90s I think we only imported roughly about four to five percent of, 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 of kind of local steel consumption so as soon as the rand weakens not only do they get the benefit from from a from a from a from a much better um, rand, rand rand dollar price but also the level of imports just completely gets washed out of the system um, which does make a, a significant difference we need to so go you have to be a believer that the rand is not going to go back to six, you know, in order to make money. We need to go to hot or not. Paul, in your book, mm. ArcelorMittal. No, because I don't think that foot projection is in any way borne out or likely to come it's through. It's not a projection, not a forecast. <laughs> it's a scenario. So it's a I'm scenario not that may fly out. I'm not keen on the, on, the, on the prospects of the industry. I think they're going to do okay, but I think their earnings are going to be extremely volatile. So if you're prepared to own them for 10 years and to extract an average return, including years when you have big losses and others where you have big profits, maybe, but I'm definitely not that kind of investor. So not hot. Reinhardt, hot or not for ArcelorMittal? Look, I would say despite the, the longer term issues, I would say I would say hot because you're buying it at a, at a at a very depressed price. And I do fall into the camp that think the rand is, is just way too strong. Um, so hence, I think you might do relatively well.